everybody, Steve here, and today I'm here to talk to you about Replay Baseball from Replay Games. This was originally designed in 1973 by Norm Roth and John Broddick until 1991, and then in 1998 Pete Ventura took over and has been putting out sets and refining the game ever since. This is a game for one or two players, and a game's going to take you about a half an hour or less to play out. Now, there's a lot of baseball games out there. But what sets this one apart is that every at-bat is going to involve the batter's card and the pitcher's card, or occasionally the fielder's card, so that both the offense and the defense are going to be involved in the result of the at-bat. Now, there's been a lot of additions to the game since Pete Ventura took over in 98, including ballpark effects, left-right splits, and ground ball and fly ball extreme pitchers. But does all this still hold up after all this time? Well, as I've said on the show before, this is actually the game that got me involved in the sports hobby. So I'm very excited today to be reviewing it and to see how it does hold up to some of the more current baseball games out there. Is it still a home run or is the batter looking at strike three? Well, we'll take a look at what comes inside the box. I'll go through a sample of play and I'll tell you what I think after further review. All right, so let's take a look at everything that comes inside the box. First, you get a very sturdy game board. It's a trifold board that has all the game results on it. Then you have a, a field card so you can keep track of the outs and where the runners are. There's three six-sided dice, red, white, and blue. There's a rare play game booklet. Then you also get five score sheets. A welcome sheet that tells you how to read all the cards. The game rules themselves that has a very handy sample of play on the back. Then there's a double-sided chart that has an automated third base coach if you're playing solo. And on the other side it tells you how to get the results for the bunt and hit and run plays. And finally there's a double-sided sheet that has some advanced rules on it for after you get comfortable with the game you can add some extra options to your game. Now we'll take a look at the cards themselves. Each team first comes with a team card. It shows their record, where they finished in their division, the manager's name, and then a sample lineup. And it also includes a ballpark card, which has three columns that can possibly affect results during the game. And then a very beautiful picture of the ballpark itself in the middle of the card. Now the player cards themselves, will have each of the positions that they played at the top of the card as well as the defensive rating. For infielders, they'll be rated 1 through 5, with 5 being the best. Outfielders will be rated with 1 through 5, with a 5 being the best, and they'll also have an additional rating for their arm strength. Catchers is 1 through 5, with a 5 being the best, and they'll also get a passed ball rating. And then all of the fielders will have an error percentage, which is 11 through 66, with a 66 being the best. The grid that's in the middle of the card will help us determine the results of each at-bat, which we'll go through in a sample of play. Now, the pitcher cards will again have a defense rating at the top. They'll also have a hold rating, as well as a wild pitch rating, and then a endurance rating on the side. And again, they'll have the 6x6 grid in the middle, which will determine the result of each at-bat. So let's set our teams up. We'll have the Game 1 of the 1975 World Series, and we'll go through a half an inning of play and show you how the, all these results come together. So the first thing we'll do is we'll fill out the lineup card, and one of the nice features of the score sheet that comes with the game is at the bottom, it has a space to fill in all the defensive ratings for the players so you don't have to refer to their cards during the game. So we're just about ready to start the action on the field. Game one of the 1975 World Series with the National League champion Cincinnati Reds taking on the Boston Red Sox. Louis Tiant takes the mound and Pete Rose is going to lead things off for Cincinnati. Each at bat you're going to roll all three dice and you'll read them in red, white, and blue order. The red die is going to tell you which column you're going to refer to on each of the player cards. The white die will tell you which row to refer to on the batter card, and then the blue die is going to tell you which row to refer to on the pitcher card. So looking at Rose's card, at column 6, row 3, it is a 31, and then on Tion's card, it's at column 6, row 3, it's a 1 for a total of 32. 
we go to the game board on column 6 at 32 and it tells us it's a pop out to third base so just like that we've got one down in the top of the first inning so that'll bring up Morgan with one down in the inning the roll is a 4-2-3 at column 4 row 2 on Morgan's card it's a 11 at column 4 row 3 on Tian's card it tells us to refer to an infielder in this case the third baseman so we look at Petroselli's card, and we see his rating is a 3 at third base. We add that to 11 for a total of 14. And on the game board, that tells us that there is a possible error on the play. So we're going to roll all three dice and check that against Petroselli's error rating. In this case, we rolled a 14 with the red and white die, which is under his error rating of 32. So he makes a good play on a bad hop, throws on to first for the out, two down in the inning. So now with two down in the inning, the catcher, Johnny Bench, will step up to the plate. The roll is a 1-3-1. One, one. At column 1, row 3, we get a 2. And at column 1, row 1, at Tian's card, we get a 2 for a total of 4. We look at the game board under column 1, a total of 4, and we see that it's a strikeout. So Tian strikes out Bench to end the inning. 3 up, 3 down, and Boston coming up to bat. Okay guys, so there's a look at Replay Baseball, and the first thing that's going to jump out at you with this game is the component quality, which is really top-notch. The game boards and the cards themselves are really top quality, they feel really good in your hands, and they look really nice on your tabletop. The game is really easy to set up and play. You can get a game in under 30 minutes. Sometimes if you get a couple good pitchers on the mound, you can even get a game in in about 15 minutes and that includes keeping full stats for the game. And it's really easy to teach. If anybody has any sort of basic knowledge about baseball, you can sit them down, let them set up their lineup, and then you just roll the dice, you count up the numbers, and you look at the chart. It's really that simple to get into. But yet, there's gonna be a really statistically accurate engine behind it that's gonna give you the results that you're looking for for whatever season that you're playing out. Now, if there was any downside to the game, I'll have to say that I didn't think that there was before I started playing History Maker Baseball, and it's a really minor thing, which probably a lot of people aren't even going to care about, and that's that there's no fictional sets available. But really, it's without reservation that I can recommend this game to any baseball fan out there. You're going to really love what you see here. Easy game to get into, and it's going to provide you with lots of memorable moments right on your baseball tabletop. Well, a little while ago, we mentioned this one, in typical fashion, was going right down to the wire. Little did we know. Here's a swing, and a long fly ball to deep left field. This may do it. Back to the wall goes Barra. It is over the wall, and the Pirates win. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. My name's Steve. I'll see you next time. After further review.